Hey folks, this is Mark with OrientWatchUSA.com and this is one of the newest automatics that we have. I'm so glad to ever, anytime a lady's watch, which I really love, comes in, I am just so thrilled about. And as you can see right here, this, this watch does have a male counterpart. It does come in a his and hers. So if you're wondering, the male version is called FETOH001B. And I'm gonna go ahead and try to see if I can find one right over here. And I have right here. Take a look right there. It does also have a male counterpart. Just wanna show you that because uh, although the functionality is quite different between the two, um, as you can see, if you want to go his and hers, this is a good opportunity to. Okay, now back to this lady's watch. And as you can see, it is just absolutely gorgeous. It's a 100 meter case, uses sapphire crystal, has dates as its major functionality other than time, and yes, of course, it is a mechanical watch. Mechanical watch is not exactly like another, is not exactly like a quartz watch. Okay, folks, take a look at this one right over here. This is a mechanical movement. See over here, you see that little, you see this little weight as it's moving. That movement, which naturally happens as you wear it, winds up a spring, and the spring powers the remainder of the timing de device. Now this is the, considered the old school design, but at the same time, this is what watchmaking is all about. Take a look at my uh, product pages, take a look at the bottom right side, and you'll see what's a mechanical watch. Click on it, and there you'll find um, a little brief video demonstration of what a mechanical watch is. So what I want to show you, going back to the watch on the stand, is some of the design elements. And as you can see, if you, if you just take a look at the watch, that the hour and the minute hands are all, are all luminous. <clears throat> the 12 and the 6 indexes are Arabic and the remaining are all bar indexes. The design element of just black and silver is absolutely gorgeous and regal. You can, take, you can just look from the side of the case how gorgeous this watch is. Okay, look how gorgeous it is from, just from its side like that. Alright, just wanted to show you that while, uh, while it's still on the stand. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and take it off reason why I want to take it off, I want to show you some of the other angles. Like, take a look at this beautiful case like this. This is absolutely gorgeous. Yes, it does have an, uh, as you can see right here, it does have a exhibition case back. I remember how I showed you the mechanical wash? That's the one, that, that's a rotor right there. Not the rotor, but the oscillating weight. You see how I just move, it just rotates like that? Very cool. It's beautiful band. What they decided to go with is with a very sporty design. And I think they've succeeded quite well with this look. Look how gorgeous that case is. Close up. Even that crown uses that gorgeous black. Absolutely stunning. Alright folks, so let me go ahead and show you how to use the watch using the crown. You first have to unscrew it. Once you feel the release, now you're ready. It's got two steps. The first step allows you to adjust the date, which is at 16 right now, as you can see. And uh, the, if you pull it out to the second step, you adjust time. Let me show you how to adjust time first. I go to the first, now second setting, and I can adjust time, as you can see. I'm going to go ahead and put it back to, into the first setting, and now and the, and I can adjust time. Hey folks, this is Mark with OrientWatchUSA.com and this is FETOH002B. Now this is part of Orient's uh, newest automatic collection. Uh, we've did a blast on in the past, but uh, it really is a gorgeous watch. And as you can see on the wrist, it's absolutely complimentary. So what I want to show you right here, while it's still on my wrist, it does have three functionalities. It has the date wheel, as uh, the date indicator right over here by the six o'clock. We have a day indicator over here. But we also, which is quite special, have a 24 hour indicator located in this quadrant right over here. Uh, one thing I really like about this watch is just the look. Take a look at this beautiful watch on the wrist like that. The profile of the watch, how it looks on the wrist is absolutely 
gorgeous. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is take it off and you'll notice that there is a, uh, on the, uh, on the uh, buckle itself, there's a logo. Very, very simple. I'm sure you've taken off watches like this before in the past, but there it goes. It's quite simple like that. What's really nice about this watch is it does have an exhibition case back, as you can see. It's a mechanical watch, folks. A uh, mechanical watch, um, how do I explain it? It's a watch that uses mechanisms instead of a, instead of a battery uh, to drive a, um, a timing device. Now, a mechanical watch, if you look in another example, I mean, this one doesn't have, obviously just took off the case back, but as you can see over here, it's much different from what you probably would have thought, thought it looked like. It's got this thing, what they call the oscillating weight. This thing spins as you wear it, just naturally from body movement. That movement winds up a spring, and the spring powers up the, power, the, the timing device of the watch. And so it's actually a very clever design, but um, if you want to learn a little more about this, uh, you can take a look at any product page and click on what's a mechanical watch and you'll really understand the true value of an Orient watch. Okay, one thing I do want to show you is that it does have a screw down crown. Now what does that screw down crown mean? It means I have to unscrew the crown until I feel the release and then I have to adjust the watch. So in this first setting, take a look at the 12, uh, the date that says 12 right now and you'll see that it's moving, advancing forward. As I'm, um, as I'm uh, spinning the crown. I pull it out one more step, and guess what? Take a look, the, I can adjust time. One thing about this watch, folks, uh, to adjust day, this is what I do. Right now, based on the 24-hour in, uh, indicator over here, I'm now in PM. Say I, want to do, say I want to take this to Friday, okay? Right now, it's a Tuesday. Right now, I'm getting close to midnight. I'm gonna let the, nat the watch naturally pivot the day. And you'll notice that the pivot happens in two steps. Once you're done with the two-step process, when it completely goes over to Wednesday, go ahead and revert back to around 11.30 and move forward until it goes to Thursday. Now it's at Thursday, I'm gonna switch back and I'm gonna go to Friday. So this is how I traverse through the days. This is not the, probably the brand approved way, but this is something that I do, okay? And all, remember to always put the the uh, crown back, which is locked lock position. Just want to show you that beautiful profile of this case. Now this uses sapphire crystal, folks, not mineral crystal. So it's actually quite, uh, it's, it's very, very nice in terms of its features because it's going to have uh, the Welcome to the Orient Showroom. Let's take a look at today's sneak peek. All right, folks, so this is the sneak peek of this week. Go ahead and open the vault or the showcase. Oh yeah. This is the FD08. As you can see, it comes in four different variations, two in black and two in white. The difference between these two, as you can see, is that it has this one has yellow gold, and this one uses Roman numerals for its dial. So, based on just the indexes, you can just see how different these two models can be. Even though they use the same model, the same case, it's just the dial design and the hand design that makes it so different. Take a look. You'll see that they use blue hands on this one with the uh, with the Roman numerals, which gives it a very how do you say fun modern look. This one over here uses strong angles with the, uh, with the index as well as the hands, which gives it that sort of classy look. Now with the black dials, as you can see, they decided to go two directions because uh, black is usually typically our best seller, especially with the stainless steel case. As you can see right here, the application is very typical. Silver indexes with the silver hands. What makes this so special over here, the 2B, two, the two is that they decided to go with rose gold for the indexes, but decided to use a coating, uh, uh, what's it called, an IP plating um, a coating on it, so it looks more like, like that kind of gunmetal finish. So it has a very seemingly black look, okay? 
So this is the, uh, the, the, the new line. I hope that you take a look at it individually because there's a video marked for, uh, with, uh, which specifically describes each watch in full. But one thing I want you to notice here is also is the band color. Notice the black dials use the black, uh, use the black band and the white dials uses a sort of uh, slightly reddish brown band. All right, folks, so this is Mark with Orient Watch USA with FDB 0800 series. Hope to see you wearing it soon. Hey folks, this is Mark with OrientWatchUSA.com, and I got here the pocket watch. Uh, I'm doing the basically. I'm basically gonna do the weekly video, and I got a couple questions I uh, this week, and I just want to make sure that I can really explain it. Last week I tried to explain the saturation diver very, uh, as best as I could, and uh, there's a couple uh, questions that I got that are reoccurring, and I just want to make sure that I um, that I, ex I explain this pro properly. But um, the first thing is. CFDOC, why is it? Why was it? Uh, why was it overbuilt? Can you explain how using a in-house movement factors into this and some of the benefits of using an in-house movement? Very good. So, uh, as you know, that uh, all the automatic watches from Orion, uh, Orion Watch, they use their own in-house movement. For for you guys who doesn't know what a, a movement looks like, I just open the back of a watch, take a look. This is our in-house movement. This entire mechanism over here is made by Orient. It's not something that's purchased, it's something that they have built themselves. They've assembled it. If you talk with many watch manufacturers or watch people, this creation of this thing is the watch making. Everything else is dressing and uh, casing and whatnot. That's still part of watch making, but that assembly process is, um, how do you say, it's not as mechanical, it's not as, uh, it doesn't require as much thought as it does to building a movement. Uh, now, what I mean by overbuilt was the sapphire crystal that they use on the uh, on the uh, CFDOC, which is the saturation diver, is five millimeters thick approximately. Now, what does that mean? Hold on, I'm trying to give you a cool angle. What does five millimeters mean? It means that the chances of water getting in there is almost nil. And on top of that is that uh, it's so the, the the steel is so tight helium doesn't even get inside. So when I went by overbuilt was it's, they decided to go beyond average industry standards and went beyond it so that they didn't have to use an industry standard prevention tool like a helium escape valve. They just decided to overbuild, and that's what I really meant. Um, and I just want to make sure that I clarified on that. Uh, and uh, just so you guys know, this, this thing, what, what is commonly called the rotor, is not exactly the rotor. This is the oscillating weight. The rotor is this guy right over here. You'll see that the, um, this is a balance wheel. You'll see that if, well obviously you can't see it, but it's oscillating six times per second, which is giving that seamless, seamless second hand, uh, sweeping second hand, because it's pivoting once every six seconds. And so um, that's a really important part. See right there, the plus and minus. This is part of the timing device of the movement. And, um, and this is a Mako, guys. Uh, one thing that's really great to know about a Mako is that they use a metal uh, a movement, um, a metal movement holder. Now, this for the, at this price, to have something metal is absolutely phenomenal. Typically, it is um, it's made out of plastic at this level, at this price level at least. So uh, having something metal like this, not only do you have all the high options of the casing parts like the band and the case, but even the movement holder, that's the movement is well built. So it's a really, it's a really well made watch. Okay, now the second thing, actually there's three things that we have to go over, but the second thing is I want to announce the winner of the newest video. I'm gonna go ahead and place it on the screen too. Your name is Noman57, okay? And the previous winner uh, in the other one was Griffin 7up. So uh, for those who, uh, who are waiting for the announcement, the announcement is done in this video. Okay, and second question is, 
Is it true that Orient automatic movements do not have uh, manual winding because they're self-winding movements? And are, that, that, uh, because these self-winding movements are more efficient without without that mechanism. Yes and no. Okay, so uh, just so you guys know, when people say, why is Orient Watch's rotor so heavy? I don't know, heavy, so loud. You hear it now. You hear little creaks, because I had the mic right over there so, just so they could hear it. There's a ball bearing uh, system in here, folks. A ball bearing system. So it takes so much less energy for the um, for the oscillating uh, for the oscillating weight to to move, and so um, that's the reason why uh, Orient watches have slight have a slightly l louder sound on the rotor. And on, t and on top of that, um, the reason why it's such an efficient self-winding system is because of the ball bearings. This is one of the coolest thing is, things about Orient watches that you can never explain to a customer because they've never seen inside a movement. They don't know exactly what they're uh, uh, what in a movement is. But looking at this example, um, it is one of the most efficient rotors. Uh, you can take a look at the um, at the School of Horology video underneath this video. Uh, actually, not underneath this video, but that goes along with every product page. It'll explain to you what the ball bearing system is and, the, uh, and, the, and why this basic and more simpler system is a better piece. Now, this does not mean that it's uh, that we don't need mechanical, uh, mechanical wa uh, winding watches. Uh, in the future, I believe next year, we're gonna start making uh, most of our movements hackable and windable by the crown. You know, one of the first steps to that was to build this watch. Now, folks, this watch is our f one of the first Orient movements that has a hackable second hand as well as windable by the crown. This one over here, as you can see, has no oscillating weight. There is no automatic winding system on this watch. In fact, it, all it does Really, it has a power reserve indicator, a power, a power reserve indicator located right over here, as well as um, as as well as uh, winding and a hackable second hand. So this is step one. This was introduced earlier this year, late last year. So now the second step is now to introduce this technology among all of our watches. And so that's the that's the answer for uh, for why we don't have a winding system. Well, there's two answers. Well, this is the second answer. We are, we're working on it. And the first answer was, yeah, we do have a more efficient winding system, but that's not the reason why we don't have a uh, manual winding. So, uh, hope this has been <laughs> an informative video. Uh, I know many of you guys don't get to take a look inside uh, a mechanical watch, you know, so. I do one 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 of these days. I just want to rip one completely apart. That way, you guys can really understand what we're talking about. What mo why movements are movements. And uh, oh, I want to let you guys know one more thing. It's a it's something that's been happening quite a lot. And I just want to make sure um, if you have one of these watches that you could take this time to for me to give you this warning. See the um, this is a wind uh, a winding crown. You see right now the power reserves at twenty. Take a look as I'm winding the crown. And you can see that I'm almost close to 30. Now these are units of hours, folks, okay? This means that it's gonna run for 30 hours. Every hour it's gonna go down increments of one. And if I wind the crown, I'm giving it, uh, I'm basically fueling it up, giving it gas. One thing I want you to remember, guys, is that when you pull out for the time, don't yank it out really, really hard. Uh, we've received a couple repairs that people pulled on this way too hard, thinking that it's some sort of uh, a large mechanical piece. No, it's a delicate piece, folks, so go ahead and give it the respect that it deserves and so that you can wear it for a really, really long time. All right, folks, so this is Mark with OrientWatchUSA.com with my weekly video. Hope to see you wearing Orient Watch soon. Hey folks, this is Mark with OrientWatchUSA.com and I got here FQB2U006B. Now this is part of Orient's fashion line and as you can see, uh, it doesn't have a mechanical movement. As you can see, the second hand's ticking, it's like, just like a regular quartz. And you'll also notice that there it is using rose gold for the case as well as the hands. Now what sets this apart just a little uh, from the other line, like I just said, it uses rose gold and does have a very dramatic uh, difference, uh, contrast with the black band as well as the black dial. 
you'll notice on the dial that there are there is an, uh, a picture of something. Now, if you look closely, it's at, it's of a dragon. And the Chinese character that's located right here on this side, right over here, that one means dragon. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to take it off. I think it's going to be easier to understand it visually more than me explaining it to you. Up, out, through. Okay. So I want to show you how thin this thin this case is. It's beautiful and very comfortable. It does have the case uh, does have a case back stamp with the company logo on it. And it does use a beautiful black leather band, as shown here. Now the rose gold is complemented by the buckle too, uh, it also being rose gold plated with uh, the Orient logo on it too. Alright folks, so this is FQB2U006B. Hope to see you wearing it soon. Hey folks, this is Mark with OrientWatchUSA.com and this is part of Orient's new fashion line now this whole line was supposed uh, was was designed to celebrate some of the cultural elements of the Japanese people, and as you can see from here, you can see that there's a big Chinese character over here, which actually means dragon. And if you look closely at the dial, they have images of dragons uh, to complement the character. It uses a nice thin case, as you can see, right there, and has a gorgeous leather band and with the Orient logo on the buckle. Now to take this off, all you gotta do is simply take it off like most, like just gotta pull, take out the, the top, there you go. I think seeing it's much more easy than explaining how to do it. There you go. So here's that dial again. Here's the side profile of the case. As you can see, it's extremely thin. The case back does have a brand stamp on it. It does use genuine leather, as you can, as you can read from the back of the leather band. There you go. I think that gives you a nice view of dial. Now this is a uh, quartz watch, folks. It's not a mechanical watch, so you can trust the time as long as it's uh, as long as it's uh, ticking. Okay. So this is Mark with OrientWatchUSA.com with FQB2U003W. Hope to see you wearing it soon. Hey folks, this is Mark with OrientWatchUSA.com and this is part of Orient's extremely new and extremely fashionable watch um, line. It is FQB2U002W. Now as you can see from this dial, how, how it's, it's quite different from a lot of the Orient watches that you've seen in the past. As you can see, it's got a Chinese character on it. Um, I'm going to just back off just so I can rest my hand a little better. but. As you can see, it's got a Chinese, char Chinese characters on the right side over here, as well as a picture in the back. Now, this line of watches was this, uh, was to celebrate uh, Japan and uh, some of the things that um, some of the cultural elements that they uh, want to sh uh, that they want to share. And over here, you can see pictures of lions in the back, and the characters over here actually mean lion. And uh, as you can see, that's the reason it's because they have the picture back there. It has a beautiful case that's very simple, right? And it has a nice white yeah, uh, leather band. You'll notice the buckle does have the Orient logo on it. Okay. So uh, now this is a uh, not a mechanical piece. It's got a quartz movement, so you can always uh, you can always trust the time as long as it's still ticking. So uh, let me go ahead and take it off so I can show you the case back. Now, it's taking it off. All you gotta do is just pull on the leather band, like just like most other uh, watches you've worn with leather in the past. All right. Case back does have the company logo on it, so you see. Sorry about I didn't remove the hologram. I'm oh, sorry about that. All right, so folks, so this is FQB2U002W. Hope to see you wearing it soon.
Hey folks, this is Mark with OrionWatchUSA.com and this is FQB2U 001W. Now this is part of Orient's fashion line that's brand new. Now, the whole concept of this line was to, uh, was to celebrate uh, Japan and some of the um, some of the cultural elements that they want to show. And um, in this example, they decided to go with a dragon theme, as you can see from the picture on this side, and as well all around the, uh, the dial. And you'll see the Chinese character right around over here. That means dragon. Just. And that, I'm sure, makes perfect sense in coordination with the picture. Just want to show you a couple more angles on the wrist, like this. All right, we're just going to show you how to take it off, which is so simple. Now, if you see it, I'm not going to really say anything. I think the, uh, the picture will do a good enough job to explain what it is. Okay, so let's go right to the dial itself. Like I said to you before, it does use uh, pictures and uh, pictures of dragons, as well as using the Chinese character for dragon. It does use a very nice brown leather band. Now the golden case is complemented with a gold colored buckle, which does have the Orient logo on it. Okay. All right, folks. So this is FQB2U001W. Hope to see you wearing it soon. Hey folks, this is Mark with OrientWatchUSA.com and this is CUBSQ005E. Now this is part of Orient's uh, fashionable line. Obviously a ladies watch, but um, the reason why, I just want before I explain to you about the watch, um, Orient decided to uh, make a line of watches that celebrates uh, some of Japan's uh, cultural elements and incorporate that into a watch design. As you can see from the right corner, this is uh, the Fuji watch, and this also, the character resembles uh, the Fuji. And probably you've heard of Mount Fuji and whatnot. I, to be perfectly honest with you, I'm not too familiar with, with Fuji, but as you can see, it does, from the picture, it looks like a plant, and it's somewhat purplish. And as you can see, the band and everything, is uh, was uh, coordinated beca uh, because of the characteristics of the Fuji. All right now, it does use a quartz movement, doesn't have a mechanical movement, so as long as it's still ticking, you can trust the time. All right, I'm going to go ahead and show you the profile of the watch. This it does have a nice purple band. Okay. All right, folks. This is Mark with OrientWatchUSA.com with CUB, uh, CUB SQ 005E. Hope to see you wearing it soon. Hey folks, this is Mark with OrientWatchUSA.com and this is a very special edition watch. Now this is part of Orient's uh, fashion, uh, fashionable uh, line. As you can see, it is quite, um, it's quite different from the other watches that we've had. Now Orient typically doesn't make too many fashion watches and so um, we decided to uh, have a try with some of these, uh, with this very colorful watch. Now um, the whole line, the whole concept of this line was to, um, to to incorporate some of Japan's uh, cultural elements into watch design. And as you can see, you can read uh, Sakura right over here, and that's what the Chinese, uh, the Chinese character over there also uh, means. But Sakura is, uh, is cherry blossom. I'm sure you've, uh, you've heard of uh, Japan's cherry blossom and how, how beautiful the colors are, especially when that, uh, it's, it's fall for this type of, uh, when it's fall, sorry. Okay, so uh, this, um, as you can see, uses gold plated case. 
and in the picture, as you can see, is of the cherry blossom. There we go, like that. Okay, let me go ahead and show you. The buckle also uses the same gold color as the case. Oops. And it uses this beautiful white leather band. Alright folks, so this is Mark with Orient Watch USA with uh, with C C U B S Q 004Z. Hope to see you wearing it soon. Hey folks, this is Mark with OrientWatchUSA.com and you're looking at CUBSQ002V. Now this is part of Orient's uh, fashion line. Now this line specifically tried to use and, and incorporate uh, some elements of Japanese culture into the watch design itself. And in this example, they decided to go with Botan plant. And you can see the Chinese characters on the left side over here that correspond to, uh, which basically just mean botan in Chinese. And uh, when I say Chinese, um, the Chinese characters is used all over Asia, including Japan itself. So, uh, uh, the, but the characters over here just simply mean botan. So, um, as you can see from the dial design itself, you can have an idea of what the botan plan actually looks like. All right. So. You can see it has a uh, gold case and uses a brown band, which I can show you a little better if I straighten it out like that for you. Okay. Now, the, the case, I mean, the buckle uses the uh, Orient logo as well. And it does have a uh, brand stamp on the back of the case back. All right, folks, so this is CUBSQ. 002V. Hope to see you wearing it soon. Hey folks, this is Mark with OrientWatchUSA.com and this is CFH AD 002V. Now this is part of Orient's executive series and as you can see it's an absolutely regal choice. Take a look at that beautiful case on the wrist. And this is how it's going to look when you take uh, check the time. Absolutely gorgeous. As you can see that they decided to go with a semi-skeleton with, uh, with this design. And uh, you can see the exhibition holes by the, between the 8 and 10 p.m. indices. First thing I would love to do is to, like, to take off the watch that way I can prop go ahead and show you how everything works. Um, take a look over here. Look how gorgeous that is. That's the case back stamp. As you can see, it's got the logo as well as some of the product information in the back. But most importantly, it has an exhibition case back. An exhibition case back allows you to look at the movement. Now you're probably wondering, what's all that me those metal pieces back there? What, what that is exposing or what it, what it is displaying is a mechanical movement. Now, mechanical movement looks something like this, folks. It's, uh, it uses this little thing called an oscillating weight. This oscillating weight spins, it winds up a spring, and the spring powers the timing device of the watch. Want to know, learn a little more about this? Want to know why Orient's one of the best at these? Take a look at every any product page and click on what's a mechanical watch, and then you can really take a look and really bite into why Orient's such a special company and why it's so different from other manufacturers. Okay, just want to show you the band. And one thing I do want to show you also is that this uses a deployment buckle. Now normally when you uh, take off a leather band, you have to adjust or know where, which, notch, which notch that you need every single time. What this class does, it eliminates that entire part. All you got to do is press these two buttons either side of the clasp. Here's one button as you can see over here. If you press both of them, it releases. And once you release this, all I gotta do is put it on, engage the clasp like this, and now the watch is on me. If I wanna, if I wanna take it off, press the two buttons, and it releases. I never have to worry about the length. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the, uh, some of the things on the dial. As you can see, absolutely filled with 
little trinkets here and there. And let's go through each one one by one. Oh, I think, you know what? It might be better to go ahead and put this on a stand. So, while it's still in my hands, I want to show you how to use it to uh, change the time. All you gotta do is pull out the uh, pull out the crown, and then just adjust. Once you're done with the crown adjustment, you always make sure to put it back in. All right, folks, so let's take a look at the dial itself, and you'll notice that we do have a power reserve indicator located at the top. We have a second hand right around here. And this right here is your exhibition dial. What an exhibition dial does, it exposes the movement, like I just showed you before, the movement, right? Exposes the movement using the dial. And as you can see, they use the size to go with three holes. One, one, two, and three, right around the power reserve indicator. Now, for those who are unfamiliar with power reserve, all right, this thing over here, we don't have no idea how much power is stored in the main spring, which is underneath here. This is like a gas gauge. It lets you know how much power you have left in the spring in units of hours. So let's take a look at this uh, watch right over here. It says approximately eight, which means for eight hours, I have enough power to power this watch. If you wear the watch, obviously it's gonna uh, creep towards the 40. And if you, uh, if you just let it stationary like the way it is right now, it will slowly move or incrementally every hour will go down one unit until it hits zero and stops. All right, so um, now that I've shown you some of the, um, uh, the dial and whatnot, I hope that uh, this video was informative to you. This is CFHAD002B. Hope to see you wearing it soon. Hey folks, this is Mark with OrientWatchUSA.com and this is FERAP 001B. As you can see, it's an extremely different watch. I'm going to try to see if I can zoom, get it right over to you. You can see how reading this watch is slightly different from many of the other watches that you've seen. Well, and particularly with Orient. We have one other model like this. We have a FERA. C, I believe I'm not too sure at the moment or AP so if you if you do like this go ahead and check it out I believe it's in the urban section okay well this model variety it does come in three varieties it comes this one is with the um, the gunmetal finish on the case as you can see it has that very nice black look to it even the crystal that they use has been tinted with black on the the bottom the top so that reading it makes it a lot more focused all right, so just a few more angles on the wrist. It's actually a very interesting watch, more more than anything else, because it really is takes a little time to to learn how to read it. But once you do, it's an absolutely fabulous watch. All right, let me go ahead and show you how to adjust it. It's very very simple. Only has two settings, so shouldn't take too long. Notice that also the buckle is uh is has that gunmetal finish to it. They call it ionized plating. So uh, if I if I do use that explanation during the uh, during the presentation, just know that it's just that gunmetal finish. So the uh, they use a snapback case back over here for the uh, for the case back, and as you can see, you can see the the brand logo as well as some of the uh, model information on the case back. All right, let's take a look at the profile of this case. You can see that the crystal is domed, and it does have a dome, uh, a dome feel to it. So it has, so when it lays on the wrist, it does look more rounded and looks a lot more comfortable. Okay, it lays a little better. All right, so now that I've shown you that, take a look at the leather band. It is black, works with the black motif of the watch, doesn't it? Actually, this angle actually shows you quite a bit. There for a little bit. Absolutely gorgeous. All right, now let's let's learn how to change the time. So you'll see over here at the bottom, that's the date, and you can see the whole wheel basically over there. Um, and then they they decide to put a box around it just so that you know which one to read. So if I using the crown, I'm going to pull out to its first setting, and then you can see how I can pivot the date, and you can see the whole date wheel. So it's actually very uh, easy to show you in this explanation. I'm going to go ahead and throw it back to the, to the outer position 
and guess what? Now I can adjust the time. Now, now you see this red line over here, right? That is where you're reading the time. So let's go ahead and that was just let's set at five o'clock. Like this. Let's go ahead and set at uh, at uh, twelve. Now, Hey folks, this is Mark with OrientWatchUSA.com and this is FUNC 7005B. Now this is part of Orient's Quartz Collection and, uh, and I'm sure if you've watched these videos before, I don't really go, I don't really to, um, spend too much time on these quartz videos but I really find this one to be absolutely gorgeous. It's really um, a really, really good balance between price as well as quality I think and as you can see from the price it is price very well see from the angles of the on the wrist the watch waist wears absolutely comfortably as you can see on the wrist my, on my own wrist myself um, a lot of people ask me to make these wrist shots but then I got another set of concerns saying people are asking me what's so um, what is that what does that size mean to me uh, so what I'm trying to do is give you a little bit of scale here is a quarter on the dial so it is a 42 millimeter case it is very large uh, not large but it's a it's one of the largest standard sizes and something that uh, something that Orient's been really working on in terms of uh, for the US market is to increase a lot of the case sizes okay so I'm gonna just go ahead and take it off all right. Notice the Orient logo. I mean, the, sorry, the brand stamp. Band stamp is on the buckle. What makes this watch so comfortable is this band. It's a high-quality urethane band. Um, I'm sure you, uh, you've uh, had rubber bands before in your in your past, but this one is a is a higher quality one, and it is flexible, as you can see, like here, which makes it very very comfortable but it's very 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 strong the thickness of the urethane as you can see is not the regular thickness and so uh, I did want to point that out on the video the case back does have the Orient uh, bands information uh, the brand information on the case case stamp okay so now let's take a look at this dial all right uh, let's go ahead and take a look at this dial um, You'll notice that it is absolutely simple. The only functionality is time as well as date at the bottom over here. What I do want to show you also is how to adjust it. There are two steps on this. There's two steps on it, okay? You pull it out once. Sorry, I pull it twice. But if I pull it once, you can see that the date underneath is being adjusted. Pull it out to the end, second position. You can see how time can be adjusted. All right, folks, so this is FUNC7005B. Hope to see you wearing it soon. Hey folks, this is Mark with OrientWatchUSA.com and I got here FUNC7003W. 
Now this is part of Orient's quartz collection and um, what makes this, this model a little uh, different from the other ones and it's uh, within the same line is that it does come with a leather band as you can see right over here. It does come with a uh, gold plated case. But one thing that makes this style very special is how easy it is to read. Now this is something that I even gave to my own father as a gift because he is now having difficulty reading time and whatnot. But I believe that this watch is just one of the best when it comes to readability. Now just so you guys know, this is a large case, so it's going to be very easy for uh, someone to uh, take a look at the time, but more, important, but more importantly, it is absolutely comfortable, absolutely comfortable. So let me go ahead and take off the watch so I can talk to you about some of the other characteristics of this watch. Some of the attributes. One thing you do notice that the buckle is gold plated as with the Orient uh, stamp on it. Alright, let's take a look at the case back first and you'll notice that the Orient brand information is stamped on the case back. Alright, now let's take a look at this beautiful watch. Alright, just get a good angle with that reflection there we are so the uh, first thing I do want to show you is to, to adjust the time at uh, the date you gotta pull out its first setting just pull that's the second setting sorry its first setting and then if you just turn the crown to one direction you'll notice that I can adjust the date pull it out one more time then I can adjust the time this is a quartz movement folks so uh, as long as the battery is good your time should be accurate um, so, um, alright folks, so I just want to just reiterate, I just, I, I wear one of the variations of this watch and it's absolutely comfortable and I really recommend this to someone for an everyday wear. Alright, so this is FUNC7003W. Hope to see you wearing it soon. Hey folks, this is Mark with OrientWatchUSA.com and this is FUNC7002B. Now this is part of Orient's um, quartz collection. As you can see, it's quite a good looking watch. I actually wear one of the variations of this watch. Not this one itself, but I, use this, I wear the stainless steel case, but this rose gold version is absolutely stunning. One thing I would like you to do is pay a little attention to how well it's fitting on my wrist. It's an extremely comfortable watch. There's a few reasons for it. Um, the the weightness, I mean, sorry, the lightness of the weight makes it so nice because it does use a urethane band instead of a solid stainless steel band. So it really makes a difference in the weight. On top of that, this band that I show you, you'll notice how nice and flexible it is, but it's very strong because if you look at the um, the the uh, how do you say the thickness of the urethane, you'll notice that it's, it's quite a sturdy band. So let me go ahead and take that off. One thing to note around the buckle is the Orient logo, as you can see, as well as the inside of the band of the urethane band. You can read Orient on it. Now the case back does have the uh, stamp with the information on it. It's a little blurry right now, but. There, you can see it right there. All right, now what I want to do is spend a little time just on the dial itself. Okay, now you'll notice that the functionality is time as well as date at the bottom over here. The crown uh, can be used to adjust both. So in the first setting, if you just pull on it lightly, okay, take a look at that. Now I can adjust the date. Pull it out one more. Now I can adjust time. Now this is a quartz watch folks, so as long as the battery is running, it's going to give you excellent time. What I'm going to do now is push it back in and you'll notice that the second half is now moving. Alright folks, so this is FUNC7002B. Hope to see you wearing it soon. Hey folks, this is Mark with OrientWatchUSA.com 
And this is a fashion watch, which is something that you're not usually able to see from Orient. But this model number is called FQB2U005B. Now, as you can see, it's a very interesting watch, isn't it? It, hasn't, it does not have a mechanical movement like some of the other Orient watches. It uses a quartz. It is a heavily designed uh, dial. And I'll go into the, uh, all the little, little uh, dial designs in a second. I just want to show you this beautiful leather band as well as the buckle. As you can see that the Orient logo is around the buckle itself. I'm going to go ahead and take it off and so that I can show you some of the features of this watch as I am, as it's in my hand. And so, um, as you can see from the dial, it's got a picture of a dragon, and you could imagine what the Chinese character uh, is, uh, what the Chinese character is on the uh, on the dial. It is dragon, and so the uh, the the character goes with the the um, the picture or the animation behind it. And so, uh, as you can see, the Orient logo is located by the nine o'clock position. Okay. Now a lot of people ask me about scale, uh, how big the watch is, because uh, my wrist might not be the same size as yours. So what I did was I brought a quarter. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that against the, the case like this to give you an idea. This is 42 millimeters, folks. And this is, which is basically a very standard size. But for those who want to see it against a quarter, there you go. I've had a couple people asking me to do that, so there you go. All right. Uh, just to look at the other parts of the watch, it's got a case back with a with the, uh, the company stamp right around the back. It uses genuine leather, as you can see. All right, folks. So this uh, this watch right here, the model number is FQB2U005B. Hope to see you wearing it soon. Hey folks, this is Mark with OrientWatchUSA.com and this is FERAP 005W. Now as you can see from the dial, it is absolutely different from most of the other watches you've seen, you know, just in general, uh, in fact, uh, not just with Orient, but with, uh, with just a whole bunch of other companies. The reason why it's very different is because they decided to use wheels instead of hands. You'll see the second hand over here. I know it's shaking quite a bit. I'm trying to keep it as, as, uh, as steady as possible. The only thing that's going to be quite familiar to you is the date with the wind over there as well as the red second hand. Everything else is slightly different. So let me try to show you how the watch is going to look on your wrist from this angle, this one, also how me look on this angle. All right, so uh, to take off the watch, you'll notice that they just use a regular buckle. The Orient logo is on there. Just go ahead and take it off. It's quite simple. I'm sure you've done this before with other leather bands. The case back is a snapback in design, but it, used, but it has the company logo as well as some of the mall description printed on it. What's really nice about this case, as you can see from this angle right over here, is that it's curved. Now, that curved look really makes a dramatic difference when it's laying on the wrist. And that's, those are the small little details that the designers went through to make sure that this watch is not only going to be functional, but look gorgeous on the wrist. All right, so let me go ahead and show you how to read this watch. Now, you probably figured it out. There is a red line right over there. You'll see it on that side. What I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the time. Oh, sorry, I'm going to take it to the outside position. Now this, right now, oh, let me go back, that says one o'clock, all right? As time moves forward, you'll see the inner circle uh, traversing up, Those, that's your minute hand, and the second hand is that red thing uh, right, that's going around the 12 o'clock now to the one o'clock position, okay? So this, this reads two. So if it's in between two and three, that means it reads 2.30. See how that works? All right, so now the date wheel, I t I, it's quite simple to change the uh, date and the time. I just showed you how to adjust time, but let me go ahead and do that again. Let's start at the neutral, neutral position. Let's click it out one step, just one, to its first position, and then you'll see the date can adjust. You see the whole wheel actually adjusts, which is, makes this explanation quite simple. Let's take it back to seven. I'm going to pull it out one more time. 
and then now I can adjust time as I showed you before. Okay. All right, folks. So this is Mark with OrientWatchUSA.com. This is F E R A P zero zero five W. Hope to see you wearing it soon. Hey folks, this is Mark with OrientWatchUSA.com and this is FDB0100BW. This is part of Orient's Automatic Ladies Collection. As you can see, this, this collection really, really try to work on the concept of the stars and moon. As you can see from the dial, what a gorgeous dial. Now this is a semi-skeleton. A semi-skeleton allows you to take a look at the, at the watch, the inside of the watch without uh, opening it. It exposes certain parts and as I can see right from the front that there are two holes, one in the star over here as well as the moon. Now it's a crescent moon which, is, uh, which makes it look very nice. So uh, what makes this watch extremely different from others that the band that they use is made out of satin instead of leather. Now the user decided to go with the rose gold throughout and one really nice design element other than the stars and moon is this Roman numeral 12 which I think just kind of somehow just fits in there and just works with the watch. What I would like to do now is take the watch off the, uh, watch off the stand so that you can really see all the little angles of it, okay? So the first thing I would love to show you is the profile of the case. As you can see, it's got an absolutely gorgeous case. The crystal does seem a little domed, which is, at, which is added value, it's beautiful. And uh, what I do want to show you also is that it has a, beautiful, uh, has a beautiful buckle with rose gold plated on it. It does have the Orient logo right over there. And then all you have to do is, I'm sure you've used, um, I'm sure you used buckles like this before, so I'm not going to try to explain it. If you look at the back of the, uh, of the case back, you'll notice that the balance wheel right over here, it's exposed. Okay. Some of the model information, as well as the logo is printed on the back, as well as some of the other hearts over here, as you can see. All right. Now the band that they use is absolutely gorgeous. Now I showed it to you before, but take a look at this beautiful, beautiful satin band that they decide to use. Absolutely gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. Now, ladies, although you may not be familiar with a mechanical, uh, mechanical watch, it is considered by most collectors as being the superior technology, even though it's considered the more old school technology. What's powering your watch actually looks closer to something like this, even though this isn't the exact movements of your watch, this is the type of device that's powering your watch, okay? See that little uh, weight that's moving around spinning? When you wear it, that spins, that winds up a spring. The spring powers the rest of the watch. Now, it's a, it's a really wonderful design, a wonderful concept, but um, you know, it's really hard to show this type of stuff or explain to the consumers that this is what's powering your watch without actually showing it. So. Uh, Hope th I hope that you find this video to be entertaining and useful. This is FDB0100BW, and this is Mark with OrientWatchUSA.com, bidding you a good evening. Thank you. Hey folks, this is Mark with OrientWatchUSA.com and this is FDB08005W. Now this is a completely different uh, type of watch that we've decided to import. We have had uh, semi-skeletons in the past, some of them have been classic, but none of them have had um, a case size like this over here. I'm sorry about the reflection. And as you can see, it's very easy to read, which is great for uh, if you want to buy this as a gift for your parents or anything like that, or if you have a grandparent that you want to buy a watch. This is nice and easy to read. As you can see, all the indexes, which are the hour markers, are very visible. And um, I think that uh, it's just an absolutely awesome watch. Let me go ahead and bring, bring it up just a little closer just so you can see a little better this dial. Uh, it's got the classic Roman numerals. And as you can see from the front, it does have, it is a semi-skeleton. 
Now, for those who are not familiar with what a semi-skeleton is, if you look right over here, you'll notice that there is a, um, that you can see the mechanics of the watch, and that's being exposed. That's what a semi-skeleton is. It just simply means it has a, um, simply means it just has a uh, exhibition hole so you can see the insides of the watch. Now this, this leather band comes off just like any other leather band that you've seen. It is genuine leather as you can see. It does have the, uh, <laughs> the, the uh, it's called the imprint on the back with the, uh, with the Orient logo. The case back is screwed down by design as you can see over here. And if you just take a closer look at the dial, now the functionality is limited on a semi-skeleton because they can't use wheels. Uh, because it will uh, cover up the semi skeleton so what I uh, so what this basically will do is go ahead and give you time now to adjust the time you see the uh, the crown right there pull it out once it's out adjust once you're dust, uh, done adjusting make sure to push it in that engages the gasket and uh, engages the water prevent uh, the water entering the case Alright folks, I hope that you enjoyed the video. This is FDB08005W. Hope you see you in work soon. Hey folks, this is Mark with OrientWatchUSA.com and I'm really happy to show you this watch, FDB08004B. As you can see, it's a gorgeous classic watch, but because of the size of the case, it can definitely be considered something that you can wear almost every day. Now this is the 4B variation, which I predict is going to be the best seller because black against steel is, is still our most popular combination. As you can see, it is a semi-skeleton. As you can notice, that you can see the um, right there. You can see the mecha the mechanical movements behind the uh, the dial. They've cut out a little hole on it called the exhibition dial, and so that you can see the uh, the movement. Okay, so uh, I want to show you just a few more angles on the wrist. It does come with a um, leather band, as you can see. It's very appropriate for this type of watch. You take it off just like any other band. I hope, uh, you know, I'm sure verbal explanation is not necessary in this type of, uh, with this type of band, but um, it is a leather band. Just wanna show you like this. So you can take a look at the case as well as the band like this. It does, it is made out of leather, like uh, as shown right here, and it does have the company logo over here. Now the case back is is um, is screwed down by design, so it's one of the best designs to keep water out of the case. So let's take a closer look at the dial. Now I said to you before that this is a semi skeleton. Now what does that mean as a, uh, a semi skeleton? Semi skeleton means, as I said to you before, that this part over here is um, is uh, exposed. Let me just find a good, better camera angle. Okay, this is this works. You can see right over there the camera's ex uh, the uh, the movement is ex exposed, which means that the the um, some of the functionality has to be limited because there's wheels like the date wheel that covers the inside uh, would cover the entire uh, the exhibition, and so the only so the only functionality that they can really do with a semi skeleton is really time, and so in this case all I can really show you is how to adjust time, which is simply pull it out. I mean the crown, and then once you're done adjusting, go ahead and push it back in. Now the gasket only engages when you push it in, so make sure after you adjust the watch always to place it back into its locked position. Okay, maybe this little angle, this might be a little interesting for you to take a look at. Alright folks, so this is Mark with OrientWatchUSA.com, this is FDB08004B. I hope to see you wearing it soon.
Hey folks, this is Mark with OrientWatchUSA.com and this is FEM7D002B. Now this is part of Orient's newest diving, uh, part of the newest diving collection. And as you can see, what makes it different from the others is not only the bezel is absolutely beautiful and black, but this is a 100 meter, uh, 100 meter mechanical diver. Now we used to have a, a 100 meter diver, but then we decided to uh, move on from there and we went to a much more modern design. Previously, um, we had a 100 meter diver with approximately, I believe, around 39 millimeter case. Or we decided to increase the uh, diameter size and as you can see, it weighs very well and quite modern on the wrist. Modern just means that they use a very much more larger case because as if you know, and I mean, you know very well if you walk around the streets these days, people are wearing much larger watches. And that's what I really mean by modern. Okay, so just to take up the class, just reverse it and you'll see something called a safety over here, which is just simply raised like this. Once you raise it, you'll see two buttons on either side. Just go ahead and press those two buttons and the band will, or the clasp will unlock. Just go ahead and reassemble by folding it again and using the safety to secure the lock. Now the band uses a matte finish, but in this particular model, which makes this model quite different from the other three variations, is the bezel itself. Now the bezel, they decided to use an IP, uh, an IP coating. Now what that does, it gives it not only just gives it the bezel or the watch a very dramatic look, but it feels like that the case is bigger. The case is bigger because the color black is used uniformly throughout the front part of the case. And um, just so you know, this is a 100 meter case, folks, okay? All right, now to adjust the time, uh, or sorry, let's start with the date. Now the Quran has two settings. The first setting allows you to go to the date, which means just go ahead and pull until you feel a, a step and then you'll notice if I rotate it right here next to Wednesday it's going to increase if I pull it out to its last step you can see that I can adjust time For those who have adjusted the watch before it's quite self-explanatory okay once you're done you always push it back in now a lot of people ask me why isn't this a screwed down crown it's a very simple answer the answer is there are gaskets inside here, folks, gaskets, the rubber gaskets. And so as long as you make sure you push it in, you're, it's pretty certain that water is not going to go in. All right, folks, so this is Mark with OrientWatchUSA.com with FEM7D002B. Hope to see you wearing it soon. Hey folks, this is Mark with OrientWatchUSA.com and this is FEM7D003D. Now this is part of Orient's Diver Series and this is the newest one to be uh, added to our collection. As you can see, it has a slightly different bezel from the others. It only indicates the 60, 15, 30 and the 45. This watch is a 200 meter uh, diver, folks, so uh, if you are going to go uh, swimming or anything, this would be a correct choice for you. Alright, so let me go ahead and show you some of the other angles of the watch. It does lay very well on the wrist, as you can see. It has a very nice blue. Now, there are some blues that are just matted out, but as you can s tell from this dial, it's got quite a bit going on. Um, it does shimmer. And so that's something, uh, that's something that Orient's been very good at in terms of its blue dials, uh, most notably the Mako. Okay, so just a couple more angles of the wrist on wrist shots. It's a very beautiful watch, isn't it? All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and take off the watch, give you a better idea of how to toggle the, the time adjustment and whatnot. This is the clasp, go ahead and raise the safety like this. Uh, you can think of this as the last line of defense the two buttons, go ahead and press it, release the clasp. The band does come in a full matted me metal, like this. Gives a very sporty feel, I suppose. So there's the clasp with the Orient logo 
on it. And if you look on the case back, like this, you can see the Orient fan stamp and whatnot on it. Cool. Alright, let's, so let's take a look at this dial. Like I said to you, the best thing about this watch, I think, is the dial because it does have a very, sh it has a very sleek, uh, shimmering effect on the dial. I'm gonna try to manipulate as much as possible, but with reflections and whatnot, it makes it very difficult. So, um, I think in this position, you can really see the quality of that dial. Okay, so this is a 100 meter piece. Okay, I might have said 200 meter in another video, but this is a 100 meter case, folks. Okay, this is this was in design to replace our 2ER line, but what what it did, what what happened was that the case got bigger, it became more modernized, and so it's a way more appropriate for the um, it's more it's a more appropriate for modern wear as opposed to the 2ER. So this is an absolutely fabulous model. One thing that you'll notice here is that they didn't use a screw down crown. So the first pivot allows you to adjust date. As you can see, right next to Friday, you'll see one, two, three, four, moving up as I rotate the crown. Pull it out one more time, and then I can adjust date. I'll go ahead and leave it around 147-ish. All right, so um, just before I go, I just wanna let you know this is a mechanical watch, folks. There's no battery in here. It's work, it, base, it works off a spring, and if you want to learn a little more about it, go ahead and press what's in the account to watch on the product page. Alright folks, so this is Mark with OrientWatchUSA.com, and this is FDM7D003B. See you later soon. Hey folks, this is Mark with OrientWatchUSA.com and this is FEM7D003B. Now this is part of Orient's newest diving collection. As you can see, it is an absolutely gorgeous piece. This is a 100 meter case, slightly different from the Mako and the Mako XL. Um, it does give a slightly, slightly lighter case which allows for more comfort. But it also has a durability that you're very well familiarized with with a diver watch. Now, one thing that you'll notice from the very beginning is that the the um, the bezel itself only has markings on the 60, 15, 30, and the 45, which gives a much different look to the dial, as you can see. Right? One thing I love about this dial is you can see that I hate to move it too much, but you can see that there is some sort of shimmering to to the dial which I found always to be nice in many of the Orient Diver series. All right, let me go ahead and take off the watch so that I can show you how to adjust it using the crown. Now, I, I raise a safety like this, right? Two buttons, press them both sides, unlocks. To re-engage the clasp, all you gotta do is refold it to here, click, and then use a safety to secure the clasp. Notice the Orient sign there. Okay, you'll notice also that the band, they decided to use untapered, uh, an untapered band, which uses just matte, uh, matte links. So, okay, going back into the dial, I mean, to the, uh, to the watch itself, uh, a couple things. First thing is the, the, the crown located around the four o'clock position. A little different, so in the first step, if I pull it out just to its first step, I should be able to adjust the date, which is at 11 right now, and can pivot like such. What I'm going to do now is push it, pull it out to its last position, which is the time function, and you can, you'll can you notice that as time moves forward, there it goes. You can see the date working. All right, I'm going to set it back to around 10. Always remember to put the crown back in to into the final into the lock position. That's when the gasket is active. All right, folks. So this is Mark with OrientWatchUSA.com with FEM 7D 003B. Hope to see you wearing it soon.
Hey folks, this is Mark with OrientWatchUSA.com. I'm so proud to introduce, in a long time, a brand new diver series. And so, this is a replacement to our existing 100 meter diver. For those who are still looking for two ER00 models, you don't need to look any further because our new diver series, I believe, is going to really impress you. So, the first thing I want to show you on all of these is that they come in four varieties obviously as you can see over here it comes in in white black and blue and if you want an IP coated bezel like one the one over here you can get this variation also which is the 7D002B now all of the functionalities of the movements are exactly the same they're the same watch the only difference in this in this particular model is the dial as well as as the bezel in this one example over here. Now, uh, one thing I do want you to know uh, is that we made product videos for every single one of these videos individually, but this is the only shot that you're gonna see of them all together. So if you want to see a difference of the dial or if you want to see the dial um, next to each other, this is what this video is supposed to serve. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna simply pick up one of these watches and just show you just a, just a couple things, okay? So, in this case, I believe this one's going to be the best seller, okay? So, I'm going to just show you a couple close-ups. So, you'll obviously see from the dial that it does have all the hour markings are luminous. The hour and the, hand, and the, and the minute hand is also luminous, but not the second hand. The movement functionality, apart from time, is day and date. Now, the bezel 60 click, okay? Nice and easy to rotate. I know we've had some complaints in the past about our bezel, but it's, from now on, it's actually quite uh, it's very smooth. All right. One thing really nice about this is that it has a four o'clock uh, four o'clock button over here. So if you see any, so if you do have any irritation when you wear it like that, it does offset it when it's on the four o'clock position. And the date the window a wheel is also pivoted through this little button over here. Alright folks, I hope you enjoyed the video. I mean, this is just one example of one of the EM7Ds, but um, I hope, uh, hope this was a uh, good explanation. I hope to see you wearing one of these watches very soon. Thank you. Hey folks, this is Mark with OrionWatchUSA.com and this, my friends, are, is the whole family of the FFE06 family. You can see this in our diver section. It does come with a 200 meter case, screw down crown, screw case back, all the, um, uh, all the hands except for the second hand, the GMT are luminous, all the hour indexes I believe to have luminous markers on them. So uh, this is uh, in some ways a diver's watch. Uh, it does have a uh, bi-directional bezel. I'm going to show you that just in a little sec, but I want you to see the whole family. This is the version in black, in blue, in white, and in a gray dial. Now, I want to, I'm going to go ahead and show each product uh, by itself, but the purpose of this video is to show the family of the GMT model. So, you can, as you can see from this entire family, you can probably choose the, your favorite color. And so uh, it does come, I, I just showed you in four different colors, so you go ahead and choose the same shade that you like, uh, the, the shade that you like. Uh, folks, this is a mechanical watch. All of these watches are mechanical, so you don't, you, don't, you don't have to expect a quartz watch. This is fully mechanically based, and so uh, want to learn a little more, go on the product page and take, and take a look at what's a mechanical watch that explain the technology. All right, folks. I hope you are uh, uh, enjoying the uh, the full the full family uh, picture. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of these watches. I'm going to take just only one of these watches. And I'm going to go ahead and explain it. Hey, folks. I'm back, and here is a wrist shot of this watch. Um, it's very hard to see what the watches are going to look like uh, on your wrist, but I hope this will give you a good idea of what it's going to look like. Uh, it's a very stunning watch. I think it has the right appeal for the American market, so 
I really think that you're gonna enjoy this, but uh, I wanna show you all the little features. So what I'm gonna do first is show you how to take off the watch, and you'll notice that the Orient logo is on the, uh, on the buckle itself. It's a safety, all you gotta do is raise the safety like this, press these two buttons on either side, and to release the clasp. All you gotta do is refold it and close the clasp after you're done, all right? So here's the profile of the case. As you can see here, it's absolutely beautiful. Now, that, like I said to you before, it is a 200 meter case. It has shoulders on both sides like this. And you can see from the side of the band that is, it is solid in construction. They decided to go with a matte, untapered look for the band. And as you can see from the back of the watch, it's actually very sporty. And from the front of the watch with the band, you can see how the band works with the case as such. Now the function of this movement is GMT, so let's go ahead and show you some of the, func uh, the functionality of this GMT. Let's first take a look at this bezel. You'll notice that there's nautical signs, north, south, east and west, as well as a 24 hour indicator uh, that's noted by the 1 through 24. Let's go ahead and use that for a second, let's go ahead and place this 24 to, um, uh, to the top over here. Let's just say in this example that I'm in Los Angeles and it is noon time. So uh, what, I'm what I'm trying to show at this point uh, is that GMT carries two time zones. Now the red thing over here, this is not a minute hand, this is not a second hand, this is an hour hand for another time zone. So let's for example say that we are going to set this time for New York City. Now New York, when it's uh, noon time in Los Angeles, it is, it is 3 p.m. or 1500 hours military time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set, uh, one, uh, one time I'm gonna set the, uh, the bezel so that it's based on New York time. You'll notice that the, uh, that the hour indices are twice as far apart as the 24 hours because every Every 30 minutes, based based on the hour hand and the time, is one unit uh, is one uh, is around one distance for an hour on the GMT hand. Let me explain. So as I progress forward, after one hour, you'll notice at one o'clock I'm right here, and you'll see that the GMT hand is halfway. So it's actually on 18, 19, which means when I go to 20. So as we progress forward, you can see how the hands keep on coming together and indeed the GMT works. Hey folks, this is Mark with OrientWatchUSA.com and this is the CERA K-Series. It's brand new. Uh, what's really interesting about these uh, watches, I'm going to use this white one as an example over here. I'm going to get this really close up onto the camera so hopefully you can see it a little better. It is absolutely a very strange looking watch. Although you see the second hand over there and you can see it right throughout the dial as, around the, um, the circumference of the dial. but. The way the hour and the minutes are being, uh, what's it called, uh, displayed is quite sim It's quite different from any other Orient watch that we received uh, in the past. But uh, definitely want to show you. Just pull out the crown at the just time. It's just the same as you can see it going by the wheel. I mean, let me go ahead and try to s show you what this says. But um, to read it, just go ahead and read the uh, the hour right there and read the smaller uh, integer over there for the minutes. It's quite, uh, it's quite similar to everything else, it's just that the, the way they uh, decide to display the minutes and hours are quite just, just a little different. Alright, so let me go ahead and show you some of the other parts of this watch. Now, this does come in three different variations as you saw over here. It comes in a white with red, which I like very much. And it comes in a more masculine black and blue. Let me go ahead and show you the band as well as the watch. Let me try to take, give you a little close-up of it. 
gives you a better idea of what the watch is. There it is. And this is the other variation. And of course, here is the last variation of the watch. I'm trying to do it without any reflections. There you are. There's actually a blue back there. I know it's kind of hard to see with the lighting, but this is a blue dial with orange and with a white with white uh, wheels. All right, folks, so this is C-R-A-K, and here's the full line. Let me go ahead and try to prop it up for you again, like this, so that we can see everything. I know there's some reflections up there, so I'm gonna cover my hands, okay. All right, folks, so I hope that you uh, decide to wear something like this. It's very different, and I think, for especially for the collectors, it'll be a nice, interesting diff uh, change of pace for the Orient watches. Thanks very much. My name is Mark Kim. Hope to see you wearing it soon. Hey folks, this is Mark with OrientWatchUSA.com and this is SFDOH001B. Now this is part of Orient's STI line. As you can see, absolutely gorgeous. Let me see that if we can get a little closer to the uh, camera, you can see the carbon fiber, can't you? The greatest thing about this watch is it uses an absolutely fabulous carbon, uh, carbon fiber dial as well as using the power reserve indicator exactly like the fuel gauge as denotes around the dial, as you can see right there. All right. All right, so let me just show you some of the other angles of this watch. It uses a very nice case, a beautiful band. Okay, so when you look at the watch, it's gonna look at least like this in terms of proportion and size, okay? So uh, let me go ahead and uh, take it off, and you'll see uh, that um, clasp is nice. Buckles nice. It's a very, it's a, in terms of watch-wise, it's a very, very solid piece because, as you can see, this is the watch, and here's the other components like the band and the and the and the band as well as the uh, as the dial and whatnot. But what I want to show you is how solid it is. Take a look at the links. It uses all solid construction, like that. Now, if you've seen a lot of my videos, I'm not going to really go in depth in the power reserve indicator one number but one thing you will notice that it uses a mechanical um, a mechanical movement you'll notice that this is a individually serial marked watch there's a limited production of a thousand and as you can see this one is made directly in Japan so it has that inscription right there on the back of the case back uh, we have all the uh, we have extended pictures that has an aesthetic picture of the case back. So if you're wondering what the inscription is, go ahead back and take a look at the product page and the pictures. All right, so let's take a look at this dial now. Um, for those who are unfamiliar with Orient watches, this uh, there was a partnership done with STI, which is the advanced uh, technical group uh, under the Subaru umbrella. And uh, although you can't see it right there, let me go ahead and adjust the time. Now this is a screw down crown, folks. You have to unscrew it. Now if I pull it out to the second step, you can adjust time. And as you can see, right over there, you can see oh, by the 3 o'clock uh, three o'clock location, the STI logo is there. One thing, something really nice about this watch this time is that they decided to use a gas gauge for the power reserve indicator, as you can see. All right? I think this angle really helps you understand the watch. It's an absolutely gorgeous watch, and I hope that this video can really, really show that to you. All right, so other aspects of the uh, watch. It, uh, it's a uh, fold-over clasp, as you can see. Just gotta use a safety by lifting it up. Press the two buttons on either side to unlock the clasp. When you wanna close it, just go ahead and fold it back until you hear a click. Use a safety to secure the lock. So that's very simple. That's the band, the clasp. Now, one thing that's kinda strange about this watch. Now, I'm gonna say kinda strange. The crown's on this side. Notice how the, if the crown's on this side, you have to unscrew it from, with your left hand and you have to... Um, so for lefties, this would be an absolutely great watch and for righties, it's actually a very special watch. So uh, the, only, the only reason why Orient decided to do that is to make this power reserve work perfectly like a gas gauge. Uh, normally, the power reserve indicates around the 12 o'clock location, so think about it this way. This is what it typically looks like on an Orient watch, so they, what they did, they basically flipped it. 
to give it that nice power reserve look on it, okay? All right, folks, I uh, hope this was a good explanation on this watch. Uh, this, this does use an FD movement, which means date, right over here by the, three, by the nine o'clock location. Uh, if I go ahead and put the crown back into its first position, you can see how I can adjust the date. There you go, let's see if you can see it, that. There you go. All right, folks, so this is SFDOH001B. Hope to see you wearing it soon. Hey folks, this is Mark with OrientWatchUSA.com and this is LUG15003W. Now this is part of Orient's Quartz Sporty Collection, but this is one of the few diver watches that we have in the Quartz Collection. Uh, if I think it might be just the only one. And so, um, as you can tell, it has a very, very, uh, I need to say, original look as a diver. You have this, the circle indexes, and then you have a, a circular rectangle, I don't know exactly, like a, almost like a stadium, and a triangle for the index. Other design elements they place in here, other than uh, is the bezel. It's a unidirectional bezel, which means you, you can only rotate one way. It's, it's there to, um, to uh, show elapsed time without having some, some, something like a chronograph, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to take off the watch. It's really, really simple. You'll see an Orient logo on the top written, all you want to do is lift this up. This is called your safety. The thing you want to do is unfold the remainder, remaining clasp to close it. You just, all you got to do is refold it to your click and use a safety to secure the lock. You can notice that the links are all solid in design. All right. And I want you to see how the watch, how the band works against this case. Okay. Now. Take a look at the uh, take a look at the profile here too. While we're here, you'll notice that the crown does have shoulders on it, and the case back is dressed. All right, let me show you how to adjust the watch. Let me go ahead and prop it on here. It's a little more stable. What I'm going to do is unscrew the crown. Then you'll hear it release. Take it to its first step. And then if you turn it this way, you can uh, adjust the day. If you go this way, you adjust the, uh, the date. Pull it out one more step, and then you adjust time. After you're done, always, oh, sorry. While pressing, while pushing pressure onto the crown, rotate until you feel the screws catch, and secure. All right, folks, so this is LUG15003W. Hope to see you around soon. Hey folks, this is Mark with OrientWatchUSA.com and this is LUG15002B. Now this is part of Orient's uh, Quartz Sporty Collection, but this is uh, one of the few diver watches that we have in the Quartz Collection. And as you can see, it has a very, very uh, classic look with those round uh, indexes and with the triangular 12. It does have day and date on the as a functionality that you can see on the right side by the three o'clock index. Okay, what I want to do is take off the watch so I can show you uh, the remaining parts. Buckle is very simple. I'm sure all of you have taken a watch off like this, so I don't want to really go into how to take it off, but um, take a look at this case back and you'll see that it is decorated. All right, so I want to teach you how to uh, adjust the watch using the crown. The first thing you gotta do is unscrew the crown. Once you unscrew it, you feel a release. Pull it to its first step and you'll see the date wheel pivoting. Okay? Now if I, if I spin it the other way, you'll see the day going. This way is for date, this one's for day. Okay? Now pull it out one more step, and then you can adjust time. Remember, once you're done adjusting time and date, always push it in, and then rotate the crown 
so that the screws, uh, what's it called, uh, close up. Okay, so folks, so this is a 200 meter case, uh, case guys. So I want to also show you the profile of this case. It's gorgeous. And what makes it, it's nice and light too, which makes it nice and comfortable for you to wear. Um, here's the bezel, it's unidirectional, as you can see. Very easily uh, manipulated with just the fingers. All right, folks, so this is LUG15002B. Hope to see you wearing it soon. Hey folks, this is Mark with Orient Watch USA.com and this is LUG 15001B. Now this is part of Orient uh, uh, Orient Sporty uh, or uh, Sporty Quartz Collection. And as you can see, it is an absolutely classic design. And uh, it there's really the most important thing about this is just how this is just a, a retake on a very original look. Okay? So take a look at a couple more uh, angles on the wrist. Let me go ahead and take, just take it off so that I can show you how to use the watch. You know, the, um, the clasp is really simple. You'll see the Orient logo in text on top. That's your safety. Lift it up, and then now you can go ahead and take the buckle and, take, and then unlock it like that. All you want to do is refold it to here, click, and then use the safety to secure the lock. Now you're done. Take a look at this beautiful, beautiful case. Right, let me show you this side. This side's gonna be a little more telling. You'll see the crown has shoulders on it. On top of that, it's got a nice little case back, as you can see. All right, let's take a look at the dial. Now, it's a very, it's a very elegant design, but it's uh, how do you say? It's something that a lot of companies have tried before, so uh, I don't really want to go too deep into the uh, the aesthetics of it. But as you can tell, it has a unidirectional bezel that's easily easily turnable. It has a screw down crown, which means you have to unscrew. Once you've uh, once you've gotten here, pull it out to its first step, and then you can go ahead and uh, then you can uh, adjust the date. Pull out another step, and you can adjust the time. Okay. So, um, once you're done adjusting, always push it in and then turn. Alright folks, so this is Mark with OrionWatchUSA.com and this is LUG15001B. See you where it's here. Hey folks, this is Mark with OrientWatchUSA.com and this is CTT 02002D. Now this is part of Orient's uh, sporty, uh, sporty Quartz collection. As you can see here, it's a chronograph. Uh, this is the major point of this watch. It is a chronograph, it has a 50 meter case, it uses blue and it also comes in two other colors just so you know, okay? What I want to do is first is just show you how to take off the watch. You'll see the Orient logo on the buckle. Go ahead and pull on it until it releases like this. What you want to do is refold it until you're a click to fasten the clasp. And take a look at that beautiful, bold, uh, uh, beautiful, bold uh, band. If you, at this perspective, you can look at the band probably the best. But now what I want you to do after you studied that, take a look at the band with the case and you'll see how it works with each other like that. All right, so one thing I do want to show you, obviously, is the profile of this case, and so you can see how beautiful it is. One thing that you'll notice, the case back does have a logo on it, as you can see, as well as some of the brand information or the product information on the, on the case back printed. All right, so what I want to do is spend just a little time on the dial itself, because this watch is a chronograph, and so I do want to show you how it works. So the chronograph has two functions basically. It measures a certain period of time or it can measure a race. Now that probably sounds exactly the same, but this is what I mean. This is scenario one, folks. I'm gonna press this button to start. 
the chronograph. This button over here that you notice, uh, the second hand, the reason why that's not moving is because that's the second hand for the, uh, for the chronograph. The, uh, the, the actual second hand for the watch itself is located by the 9 o'clock in, uh, index. And so um, if I press this button, which is the start button for the chronograph, you'll see that the milliseconds is the top, uh, the top subdial, the bottom subdial is minutes, and the regular second hand, which is normally used for time, is the second hand for the chronograph. I can stop it, and when I resume it, you'll notice that it's gonna, it's gonna start exactly from where I stopped it. So right now it's at 14 seconds, so, so sorry, 15, 16, 17, and so forth. I press it again, I can resume it again, and if I, after I'm done, I can go ahead and press this button and reset it after it stopped. Now this is the, the other scenario is a race with multiple participants. And so there's, say, let's just say there's two participants in a race. Start the race and the first person gets done very quickly at 3.9 three, at 3 seconds based on the milliseconds, right? 3.9 seconds, I'm gonna write that down. Notice when I press the split button again, it's not gonna continue for 3.9 seconds. In fact, it's gonna act like it, I never stopped it at all. So, the second person gets done at 21.45, okay? Now you're probably wondering, okay, how do I reset it? This is the reset button from before. You're absolutely right. After you're done at this point, you have to resume, stop it with using the top button, and then use this button for reset. It may sound a little uh, complicated, but once you start playing with it, it's gonna make a lot of sense. All right, folks, uh, last thing is to show you how to change the date. So you see the crown over here? All you gotta do is pull it out to its first position and you just take a look right there. It's the date right here is changing as I'm turning the crown. And I'm gonna pull it one more time. And then guess what? I can change time just like what you're used to. And once you're done, always press the crown back into its lock position. All right, folks, so this is Mark with OrientWatchUSA.com with CTT02002D. Hope to see you wearing it soon. Hey folks, this is Mark with OrientWatchUSA.com and this is CTT01001D. Now this model comes in three varieties. It also comes in a white and also comes in a black. Now this happens to be the blue color version and you can see how well that white and blue really contrast, uh, contrast with each other. And at the end, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how it's gonna look on a wrist. So uh, for now, let's just go ahead and just take a look at the dial. You'll notice a few things. You'll see the uh, the second hand over here, this is for the chronograph. These are milliseconds on top and these are minutes at the bottom over here. The second hand is located by this location over here. So um, this, this second hand that you see stationary right now, this one is the second hand for your chronograph, okay? I'm gonna take it off the stand so I can show you some of the other design elements of the watch. I'm gonna show you this beautiful case from the side over here and as you can see, it's absolutely gorgeous. The, the weight of it is very nice. If you want a very comfortable weekend watch, this this really is the watch for you. Take a look at those links also and you'll notice that it is solid in construction. One thing I love to do is show you guys the band against the case too because it all just makes sense after you see why the designer decided to use this band with this case. Now the buckle is quite simple. All you gotta do when you see the Orient logo, on either side you see two buttons. You gotta depress both of them to unlock the clasp. Refold to hear a click, then you know you secured the lock. All right. So what I wanna do is show you a couple of shots on the wrist also, because I know a lot of you guys are gonna make purchase decisions online, and I wanna give you an opportunity to see what it's gonna look like on a wrist. All right, folks, so I hope you enjoyed the video. This is CTT01. 001D. Hope to see you right soon. Hey folks, this is Mark with OrientWatchUSA.com and you're looking at CTT01. 
B. Now this is the black version of this watch and as you can see it has three color variations, blue and white are the other alternatives. But one thing is really nice about this watch is that it really just looks, I mean in terms of the size wise I believe it to be around 39 millimeters and so it has a very good feel for this, uh, this type of uh, size watch and as you can see on my wrist it's very, it's very proportional. And so the first thing I want to do is show you how to take off the watch. You'll notice that the, uh, the buckle does have the Orient logo on it. Press on either side and then you'll see that it comes right off. Uh, if you want to re-engage the clasp, re-close it until you hear a click. Look at that beautiful band. And see how that works against the case. Like I'll show you the profile of this case too. And as, I'm, as you're taking a look at this case, you're probably also noticing that the links are indeed solid in construction. So it's going to give you that nice solid feel on the wrist. Okay, what I want to do is I want to prop it on so that I can explain to you the chronograph feature. Now chronograph, you can think of it simply like a stopwatch because really that's what it is. It's a stopwatch, right? And so um, what you're, you're probably noticing why, why isn't the second hand going? What's going on with that? Actually, the second hand is right here. By this, uh, by the nine o'clock position, as you can see, it's counting. This second hand over here is used for the stopwatch or the chronograph. I'm going to call it chronograph from now. So uh, let's go ahead and start the chronograph using the start and stop button over here. Now there's two ways you can use this. So I want to show you both scenarios. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead now and start the chronograph and watch the second hand go. You'll see the milliseconds over here on the on the top dial, sub dial up there. Now, I'm going to press this again at 10 seconds, and lo and behold, it just stops. If I press this button again, it will resume exactly where I stopped the time. And as, you, as you can see, it's continuing. After I'm done, I'm going to stop it, then I'll press the button by the 4 o'clock to reset it. And you'll see how it resets very easily like that. Now I want to show you split time. Now this split time is probably a little, it's going to be a little more useful for you because what it does instead of resuming from uh, the time where you stop the watch, it's going to resume as if you never stopped the, the, uh, the chronograph. Let me explain. Let's use an example. There are three participants in a race right now. Let's start the race by starting the chronograph. Okay, so the first participant is about to cross the finish line now. I'm gonna go ahead right. I'm gonna write around 6.65 seconds because if you look at the uh, if you look at the milliseconds over here, it's in between six and seven. What I will do now is resume the resume the thing. Now watch this. Before when we did this, it just resumed right at six. The split time does it so that it never it, it, it assumes that you never stopped it. So let me press it again and you'll notice that it just continues off like I never stopped it. Second participant ends the race at around 39.4. I'm going to write that down and I'm going to continue the time and lo and behold the last person finished now at around 52.3 seconds. You notice that I pressed this button to stop it. I didn't want to split it again. This is the last participant so I stopped it. After I stop, press the reset button to reset. Okay? Alright folks, so I hope you enjoyed the video. Oh, on top of that, there is a tachometer over here. Uh, I'm going to make a video separate for this so to, to explain uh, what this does. And what this does will let you know how fast you're going if you know a certain distance. If you're racing uh, on a certain distance and say for example, you finish the uh, one mile race in around 10 seconds. That means you're going around is it one mile, so it's going to be in units of miles, so around 370 miles per hour. So that's what the tachometer does. It uses a certain distance and uses that, that scale. So if it's miles, it'll be miles per hour. If it's meters, it's meters per hour. Or if it's going to be in kilometers, kilometers per hour. All right, folks, I hope you enjoyed the video. This is CTT01001B. Hope to see you wearing it soon.
Hey folks, this is Mark with OrientWatchUSA.com and this is CTT00002W. Now this model is part of Orient's chronograph series and this is the entry level in white and as you can see it lays very well on my wrist. Uh, a chronograph is like a stopwatch. You basically have a start and stop which is the button that you see at the 2 o'clock position and reset and split time on the uh, 4 o'clock position. For those who are unfamiliar, I'm going to have a very detailed explanation on the chronograph. But as a brief explanation, let me show you how it works. If I press this button, it will start. If I press it again, it will stop. Once I'm done, I can reset. I can start. I can stop. I can resume. I can stop and reset. Or I can start. I can split which means the time counting is still going. If I press this button, you would think that it's just gonna continue, right? No, look how it jumps forward because it continues to keep the time, okay? So you can, uh, you can time multiple people within the same watch. Okay, so let me go ahead and reset that. Let me show you how to take off the watch. You'll notice that the Orient logo is located right here on the buckle. Just go ahead and pull on it and then you'll see that it unfolds. Once it unfolds, I mean, once you want to close it again, just refold it till you hear a click. Okay? Take a look at the case back, and you'll notice that it does have the Orient logo on it, as uh, including some of the product information printed on the case back. The profile of the case shows how, how nice and slim this case is. I always feel a nice, slim case is it's most comfortable, and this is a great example of one. Alright folks, let me go ahead and show you some of the other features over here. While I was working the chronograph, I don't know if you noticed, but this major, this second hand, typically the second hand was the stopwatch hand or the chronograph second hand. The small little uh, uh, subdial over here on the top is the milliseconds. It does a 1 20th of a second over here. Here is the minutes. So after this goes once, you'll see that it, inc it increases by one increment per minute. Alright folks, so I hope you enjoyed the movie. This is CTT00002W. Hope to see you wearing it soon. Hey folks, this is Mark with OrientWatchUSA.com and this is CTT00002F. Now this is part of Orient's chronograph series and this is the entry level of our chronograph. So uh, if, you're, uh, if you're new into horology, you're new into uh, watch collecting, this is a great model to start from. Uh, you'll notice that beautiful, beautiful green which I think is the highlight of this watch. It really is absolutely gorgeous as well as, the, as using a yellow in contrast to that green. Alright, let me show you how to take off the watch. Now it uses a very simple buckle, all you have to do is pull it off from this point. I mean, this, so, you'll see if you pull it off it unfolds like such. So all you gotta do to close it is to refold it until you hear a snap. Look at that band against that case. Now the case uses a combination of both finished and matte uh, metals and you'll see the case does something uh, has a similar effect to it too. Let me show you the case back. The case back does have the Orient logo on it as well as some of the product information or the model information printed right on the back of the case. So for those who are unfamiliar with chronographs, chronographs are simply a watch with a stopwatch on it. I think that's the clearest explanation to explain what a chronograph is. And for those who have never used a stopwatch before, all we do, all it does is to measure a certain period of time, like a race or whatnot. And uh, I'm going to make a separate video for chronograph that's going to explain to you how to toggle it, how to use it. But just so you know, this is the start and stop button, and this is the reset and split button. You uh, can adjust the time and the date using the crown. There's two steps. The first step allows you to adjust the date like this. Pull it out one more step and then you can adjust time. All right folks, this is Mark with OrientWatchUSA.com with CTT00002F. Hope to see you wearing it soon.
Hey folks, this is Mark with OrientWatchUSA.com and this is CNRAP003W. Now, this is part of Orient's Ladies Automatic Collection and that's right folks, this is a, a ladies automatic. An automatic uses a spring instead of a battery. You want to learn more about watchmaking and the reason why mechanical watchmaking, I, in my opinion, is superior. Take a look on the product page on the right side. What's a mechanical watch? Click on it and in five minutes you'll get all the knowledge that you need for the rest of your life on mechanical watches. So going to the design, take a look at that beautiful row of CZ on the top as well as the bottom over here. Gorgeous blocks. Take, and also I love the design element of the Roman numeral 12 as well as the 6 located over there. The bar indexes is complemented by the square ones that you notice by the 3 and the, and the 9. What I really love about this watch is this combination of this cream white against the rose gold. The CZs really work as a blender and helps the transition between the two colors. What I want to do now is take the watch off and show you some of the angles of the watch and you'll notice that the Orient logo is on the buckle itself. Pull on it, take it off as such. You'll notice what I meant that as a mechanical watch that Orient displays it through the exhibition case back like this. You see that? This is what is powering your watch, not a battery. So one thing I do want to show you here is if I pull it out to the first step, folks, I can, oh, sorry, the first step, I can adjust the date. And I don't know if you can see it, but the date wheel is right now being pivoted. Shoot, I can't even see because I'm so far away from the watch here right now. Okay. There it is, there it goes, like that. And then after you're done adjusting the date, you can pull out one more step and they can adjust time. All right, folks, so this is CNRAP003W. Hope to see where it's in. Hey folks, this is Mark with OrientWatchUSA.com and this is CTDOB001B. Now this is part of Orient's chronograph series, but this one also has an alarm. Take a look at that watch from the side like that. You can see how nice and thick that case is. It's got this bezel over here which has to, uh, which requires a little more, uh, sorry, a little more thickness in the case and so, that's why this one's so hefty. It's also a 100 meter case, which is much, uh, not much larger, but it is more, it's a little bigger or a little higher rated than most of our uh, most of our cases in the chronograph series. And so, first thing I want to do is show you how to take off the watch, and you'll notice on the bottom that it has an Orient logo on it. With that, you'll see a safety. Just go ahead and lift it up. You see two buttons on either side. If you press it, it unlocks the clasp. Reclose it so you hear a snap, and use a safety to secure it. Notice over here, on the case back, you see the Orient logo as well as some of the, uh, the product information on the case back itself. Now, on the profile of the case, you can see this. Absolutely gorgeous. Even the bezel gives it a little, uh, little uh, has a little uh, edging to it. These are what they call shoulders on the, on the, uh, on the crown. So any sort of, this, if there's some sort of wall and you hit it, it should hit the shoulder or is it, there's a good chance that it's going to hit the shoulder so to protect the stem. Okay, so let's take a look at the front of the watch. You'll notice one thing, it has a, a rotating bezel. Now this isn't a diver's watch, but uh, it's actually quite close to a diver's watch if it was just rated for maybe 200 meters and I think at that point it could be considered a diver's watch but because it's a 100 meter, di uh, 100 meter case, it can't be really considered one. So let me just prop it up on the stand so that my camera guy can get a nice close up. Let me find my little pointer. All right, so this over here is the, um, this over here right here is the second hand. All right, it's not the long one, this is the second hand. That's your alarm. Now, for me to explain the alarm will take another three or four minutes, and so I made a separate video for that. Please take a look at that if you want to learn how to use the alarm. It also has um, a date function right over here, but if you notice, there's a little magnifying glass right here that's been placed in the crystal. If you saw from the profile of the case, you can see this. there's a little thing popping out. 
that's what that was. So I want to also show you now how the chronograph works. So the chronograph has basically two functions. One, uh, one way is to use just this button, start, stop. When I start up again, see how it resumes exactly where I left it off. Stop, start, stop, and reset. Once it's stopped, you can reset it. It can, it will, this button will only reset the, the chronograph once it's been stopped and not split. So let me go ahead and split the time now. Sorry. Start the chronograph. Now, let me split the watch now. I split the time now. But so the first winner of the race, I'm going to write down his time. And say, now I see the second person coming. He's about to cross the line. Now, see, now take a look. Right now it's at five seconds. When I resume the time, it's going to resume as if I never stopped time. Second person wins. Uh, not wins, crosses the line. 20, uh, 22 seconds. Write it down. Third guy's coming. Okay, he's finished around now. Oh, he did in 30 seconds. So that's how split time works. Okay, so if you want to uh, toggle the date, all you got to do is unscrew the crown on the side. After you feel the release, go and pull it one step. And now you can adjust the date. I'm going to pull out one more step and I'm going to adjust the time. Alright folks, so this is Mark with OrientWatchUSA.com with C. TDOB001B. But before I let you go, always remember, folks, to put the crown back in. Okay? After you're done adjusting the watch. Alright, uh, thanks. Thanks for watching the video, and I hope to see you wearing this soon.